quiet line. That's the way I prefer it. So. <laughs> All right. I used to do that too. Get on my side. I'm good. I'm well. Ready? Mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Okay. Start the clock. I got it. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, I feel uh, well enough uh, because they give you medicine uh, to be sure that you feel good. How I'm doing, as I always say, is another question. And uh, there the doctors are, uh, you know, disputing among themselves as to what's working, what's not working. And uh, we'll see uh, what's next in the protocols uh, and what kind of treatment they might come up with next. You've been, you've been fighting cancer on and off for about a decade now. How well, I, I had seven good years where I wasn't fighting it. At least it was uh, no indication that it was there. So I've really been fighting it the last two and a half years. But what, what keeps you going? Uh, well, uh, what's the alternative? <laughs> you know, uh, also I have responsibilities to others. And that keeps me going. And uh, to the Lord and to his church. So uh, I just keep uh, Moving along so far, with the help of uh, God's grace and many good doctors, I've been able to uh, keep up my schedule and, and to fulfill my obligations. And um, so uh, here I am. Uh, we'll see. Once I retire, uh, you know, then uh, things might be a little different, but we'll see. Let's talk about your schedule. Here you are near retirement, near the transition, and you are as busy as really you've ever been. Yes, to a great extent, but then it, it goes with the job, it goes with the territory. Right. You know, if you're going to do the job, you have to do the job. And uh, since uh, the inner resources and the stamina are weakening, uh, I really insisted that uh, they move towards a replacement, which they did, for which I'm very grateful. Thousands of people turn to you for spiritual guidance mm. and help in, ter in, in times of crisis. Who do you turn to? Is there an individual that you turn to? in those moments in your life? Well, I turn to the Lord, of course, mm -hmm. as so many do, and then uh, they write me to tell me that, which I'm very uh, grateful for. Uh, is there a particular individual? There's my confessor. Uh, there is, uh, you know, in terms of uh, overcoming extrinsic crises, not spiritual crises. I have the Vicar General. I have a lot of people who are skilled and who know what they're doing, and uh, they're very helpful. So I, I'm not isolated. I, I have a lot of help from a lot of very good people. When you are out and about, what are people saying to you now when you're out and about? What, what, is, what is the one thing that, that most people are saying to you when they see you in public now? Well, very often now, uh, not always, but very often they come up to thank me uh, for my years here. Uh, they recognize that uh, not everything was perfect, uh, but nonetheless I stayed with it and uh, tried very hard to uh, be of service to them. And uh, I think a lot of people do recognize that, for which I'm grateful. And they're very kind. Uh, they're very kind. So uh, they uh, will come up uh, with uh, general sentiments and sometimes with more particular things. You know, you don't realize that you helped me in this, but you did. Right. And of course, uh, you would know that too from your own experience as a reporter. Sometimes you say something on the air, not realizing that it's going to have some impact on somebody's life, but in fact it does. And so that's also true for every priest, I'm sure, and every bishop, uh, we say something. Sometimes we don't realize the impact, and it's not a good one, it's negative. At other times, uh, most times, I believe, it's quite positive. And uh, to hear that uh, assures me that, you know, what I'm doing is uh, sustained by God's grace and uh, is kept together by that. So uh, it's a good time in the sense that I'm hearing from a lot of people, and it's very gratifying. And I assume you're getting letters and emails and messages daily? Yeah. From Chicago? Do you get them from all different parts of the country, from around the world? To some extent, but mostly from Chicago, yeah. yeah. But I've, I knew a lot of people, uh, I knew more people outside Chicago than in Chicago when I came to Chicago. You know, I, I traveled around the world for, for 13 years, and so I met a lot of people, and I've kept up with a lot of them. And uh, so I hear from them. And then uh, others who respond more or less because it's the line of duty. Uh, to respond, and uh, then uh, Chicago. Uh, and what I most treasure is precisely the uh, letter that isn't the line of duty. It's something, you know, that uh, I uh, didn't realize I was doing, and I was, and it's had good effect, and I'm grateful. Yeah. 
You just mentioned that uh, during your tenure, it wasn't, you said there, it wasn't all perfect. Looking back, is there anything that you would have done differently or any, I hate to use the word regrets, but do you have any of those? Oh yeah, we've just, you know, the, 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 the McCormick, we thought we had everything nailed down, at least I did when I came to Chicago, it had a great reputation and we worked at trying to take care of the victims of sexual abuse um, very hard and uh, and yet uh, the system didn't work in the McCormick case. It fell apart. We were in silos. And had I been more attentive uh, to that, uh, realizing that we weren't talking to one another, I didn't realize that. I should have. But you know, the way the system was set up, and still is, uh, the ordinary, the archbishop, is, is, is kept out of it precisely so that he doesn't interfere with the investigation and he doesn't interfere with the process. And that worked against us in this case. Uh, so I would have changed uh, the rules as I think they're changed now and I would have uh, been more attentive. I figured it was taken care of, that we just trust the system. And uh, it, it didn't work. And so yeah, I regret that immensely, uh, ter terribly. And, and you know, not only because the children were abused on my watch, but also because of the whole uproar in that parish, in that school, in the church. And uh, you know, th th this uproar is constant anyway because there are people with a vested interest in keeping it constant. But uh, beyond that, uh, we've pretty well uh, taken care of everything mm -hmm. here, I think, and we're going to uh, do the last uh, bit of uh, uh, business, I think, by being sure that our records are clear and uh, available. And uh, so people, uh, in the long run, will work it out. And uh, the, I think the final story, if people take it, uh, manage to uh, read everything. Uh, the final story here, at least, will be very different from the national story. I firmly believe that. And uh, that, in a sense, because I won't see it. But I think that that's true. And uh, I can go down the line and say where it's true. Nothing was covered up here. From the 1990 on, uh, the police knew as much and sometimes more than we did. So we didn't cover anything up. I never transferred a guy whom I knew had abused a kid. Uh, you know, so the story is somewhat uh, different here uh, from uh, the national story, but it's always easier to fall back on, on a national story or to put people in boxes, and then you don't have to think. And there's a lot of that. So do you think it's a little unfair then that people haven't read all of the facts? Oh, well, good Lord, to read all the facts would take you a lifetime. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's unfair to make a judgment when you don't know the facts mm -hmm. and when you could take uh, uh, the time, if you wanted to, to uh, get to know them. Uh, but I'm not complaining about that. I just think that uh, there's a lesson here uh, that isn't just around sexual abuse of minors in the church or anywhere else, but uh, in, in anything that uh, people uh, be uh, critical of their own thoughts. You know, I've always felt that. Maybe it's because I'm a professor. You know, basically, I taught philosophy for a long time, and philosophy is criticism. But we're not trained to criticize our own thoughts. We're trained to criticize authority. And so consequently, uh, people will say something, and you say, well, why do you say that? Well, how do you know that? And very often, they can't tell you. Yeah. And uh, so you think, well, where did you get that from? You know? And that's somewhat the case here, but not entirely. I mean, this is a terrible, terrible scandal. I don't want to minimize it at all, nor to say that, that uh, we don't deserve whatever criticism we get. I don't mean to say that at all, believe me. I've talked to enough victims to know the terrible consequences of these acts. So uh, that would be uh, one area where I wish I had, uh, you know, in some cases I wish I had moved more quickly. Uh, you know, we're in a financial bind, although we're going to get out of it. We have good protocols with the Finance Council imposing them on us. Uh, I delayed uh, and didn't close schools, etc., because I thought we could, out, we could ride out the recession. And I just delayed about two or three years too much. So we went into too much debt. Uh, I wish I hadn't delayed. There are a number of other things. I tend to be desultory a little bit. I tend to to know what's going on and then be slow to make a judgment, and uh, too slow sometimes. So there are a number of uh, rather important decisions that I could have made more quickly. I think they were the right decisions when I finally had enough courage to make them. <laughs> but I, I was slow to make some decisions that I should have moved on more quickly, whether personnel or, or uh, the uh, uh, way in which we operate. Uh, you know, you look back and you say, why didn't I see that earlier and why didn't I act uh, more quickly? So there's a, there's a lot of that in the background. But there's also all the, not necessarily great successes. You know, in the end, history is what God remembers. And we don't know it entirely. We won't until he reveals it to us at the end of time. Uh, but there's a lot of very good things. I go around, you know, from parish to parish, and I meet a lot of very good people. There are a lot of very good people in Cook and Lake County. 
uh, you know, people who have heard the gospel and have converted to the Lord and, and who are close to him in the sacramental life of the church and who love their neighbor. Uh, they're just a lot of very good people. And, uh, you know, that's because the church is at work. Uh, so uh, because we don't go to the Lord alone, we always go together. And so we've got parishes that are bringing people along. And I'm very proud of that and grateful to God, as I know all the priests are as well. So we talked about some of the low points. Mm. And you talked about the people, some of the high points. What are some of your shining moments? What, when you look back, what are some, what's some of your proudest accomplishments? Well, I made it through 17 and a half years. Uh, yes. There were days, no, there were days when I thought, this is it. This is it. Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, uh, my proudest account. I think, you know, uh, I, I don't know that I have to uh, zero in on any particular thing. I think the fact that I tried to be faithful day after day and do my work, and so many others have too, uh, that's an enormous accomplishment. We, we don't think of it because we're used to thinking of the extrinsic signs of great accomplishment. You know, I've opened a couple schools, I've opened some parishes, I've closed some too. I've done this, I've done that, I've encouraged religious orders, new ones to come in. I've, I've done the usual things that a bishop does, and they're good things, and I'm proud of that, uh, grateful for that. Most of all, I'm grateful that people cooperated with the reform of uh, the formation programs. You know, I've really tried very hard to reform the seminaries and the, and the uh, deacon formation program, the lay formation program, the lay ministry program. Uh, Hispanic deacons, uh, the catechetical uh, thing, that was something that I inherited uh, as a, uh, a goal of Cardinal Bernadine. And uh, so I tried to bring that to a conclusion. And uh, so those are, those are the things that count because people last forever. You know, buildings don't. Parishes come and go, dioceses come and go, countries come and go. But people it last forever, we believe that. And so if you can influence somebody's inner life, uh, and you have good programs to help them help others and be responsible, uh, that's, that's something I'm very proud of. And I think we've done that in good, good part. We've talked so much about your work and we know so much about your work and you've done so many wonderful things. But I want to talk a little bit about Cardinal George, maybe some of the things that, that we don't know. Do you have a bucket list? <laughs> no. No, I, I, I've lived long enough to say, you know, there's not a heck of a lot of stuff uh, that I uh, really want to, uh, you know, somehow get in. So what? You know, I mean, that isn't what's necessary now is to prepare my soul to meet the Lord. And uh, so I would like to spend more time in prayer. And uh, there's one thing, it's kind of bizarre, but you might enjoy it for that very reason. Uh, you know, all of my life since I was uh, a bishop, basically, and before that also, when I was traveling uh, with the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, I've flown across the ocean. I've flown across the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean less frequently, but I've flown that as well. And that's a long flight. But the Atlantic, I've gone back and forth again and again uh, without hardly thinking of it. And uh, the one thing I thought I might like to experience is going across the ocean on a ship. You know, what's it like to be in the middle of the ocean with all that water, and that's all there is between you and the bottom of the sea, and you've got this little boat, little, you know, in terms of what you're facing, and the infinite sky, and uh, what's that feeling like, you know, where uh, there you are, a little speck uh, in the uh, ecosystem of, of, of our planet, let alone, let alone all the other planets, uh, and I think you would probably get a sense of that, uh, maybe not, uh, if you crossed uh, the ocean on a ship. So I suppose if there's anything I would like to do, one thing, that would probably be it, I suppose. But I'm not sure I'll do that, and if I don't, that's okay, too. <laughs> well, I think you need to hit a cruise, then. No, a no, not a cruise. No, 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 I'm not up to cruises. I, I'm, not, I'm not up to cruises. No, no. Me, I'm more a hermit. <laughs> let me, I think we'd be well together on a boat, then. We have a lot of similar traits. <laughs> you stay in your room, I'll stay in mine, yeah. and come together to, to eat supper. You know, you have, you have been there for a lot of people uh, in those moments where they are preparing their soul to meet the Lord. And, mm. And, uh, and this is a serious question I want to ask. Um, are you afraid of dying? I don't think so. Now we'll know as the time comes uh, more quickly. Uh, I don't think so. Naturally, I, I don't want to die in pain. Uh, and so far, they've been able to free me of pain, for which I'm very grateful. Uh, I uh, don't know what it'll be like to have the complete dissolution of your body. 
and I'm not sure you experience it very much. You know, what do you feel at the end? What, what's left? The nerves are, I'm sure, less sensitive than they were, and I have no idea what it's like to die. So I'm not exactly afraid of it, except to the extent that I'm afraid of anything that's unknown. Uh, and I'm uh, curious about what comes next. I mean, I believe we're, we, we, we have a spiritual soul and that uh, we are made by God to be with him forever. Uh, and, but I have no idea what that means, really. You know, what does it mean to, to, be, to live in that kind of world where, uh, you know, there are no colors, there's no imagination, there's no images, there's no, uh, because we don't have a body to experience those things. And so what does it mean to, to think, uh, you know? I remember when my mother died, uh, I, I stayed home from Rome for a month to take care of my dad and to try to get him through that transition. We said mass very often on the dining room table. And he would ask me sometimes, what do you think uh, she can know? What, uh, does she know we're praying for her? And uh, all I could say was, Dad, uh, she knows what God wants her to know. And uh, that's all any of us can say, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> and so there's a certain intellectual curiosity, if you want to, if that sounds crazy to say that, I know. But there's a certain uh, just intellectual curiosity. What's it like? Uh, what's coming next? And we know that God is light, that's from Scripture, and also there are a lot of testimonies to that in the mystics. Uh, and we know that He's love, uh, certainly, so that must be a, a marvelous, infinite love, must be a marvelous experience. But. Uh, I have no sense of, of what that will uh, really be like. So that's what I mean by preparing my soul to meet the Lord. There's an old medieval uh, system of uh, spiritual exercises called the Ars Moriendi, the art of dying. And uh, various uh, mystics and others, uh, St. Alphonsus Liguri, the founders, founder of the Redemptorists, uh, wrote a very fine treatise on that. I'm starting to look back at some of those treatises and uh, see, you know, how do the saints die? and uh, what's necessary to prepare yourself for that. I know we're running short on time, and I want to get one more question in. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, you're not dead yet. No, means, no, I'm not dead yet. Means, uh, <laughs> no, I think I got still, some more time. You, you still have work to do. I, I still have work to do. I have to finish this, and there's a lot of other stuff I would like to do. Let, let, me, we'll ask you, let me ask you what's next when, when uh, Archbishop Supich comes in mm -hmm. and, and you retire. What, what will you be doing? Well, I, publicly, I'll do what he wants me to do and no more. Uh, privately, I have a whole lot of projects, and, and uh, for the while, for the moment, I had planned to move out the 19th of November because this is the house of the Archbishop. If I'm not Archbishop, I shouldn't be living here. But he's not going to move in here, as he said, and uh, he has suggested to me that I stay here until we know uh, whether my health will stabilize or not. So it's very kind of him to do that. And so I will stay here at least for some weeks, maybe months, maybe more. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Are we close to 20? Are we good? Yeah, you're good. All right. Thank you. Carl Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks it's, a lot. It's just been yeah, amazing. Good, good to be with you. Really, uh, really honored to sit down with you. Really well, thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to come, all you folks. Good. All right. Okay.